Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee Lavalle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about comparing yourself to others or comparing yourself to yourself. And I was reminded of this idea the other day through Jordan Peterson's book, The Twelve Rules of Life. And rule number four in Jordan's book is compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. And he points out that it was probably much easier for people to be good at things when more of us lived in small rural communities. Somebody could be homecoming queen, someone else could be the spelling bee champ, math whiz, or baseball star. There were maybe only one or two mechanics in town and a couple of teachers. And in each of their domains, these local heroes had the opportunity to enjoy the serotonin-fueled confidence of the victor. And perhaps it might even be for that reason that many people who were born in small towns are statistically overrepresented among the successful people in the world. And if you're a one in the million person, but you grew up in New York, there's now 20 of you. Most of us do live in cities, and as we've become more and more digitally connected to perhaps the entire 7 billion planet, our hierarchies of accomplishment and chances to be the best at something are radically different than what they used to be. I've always loved lifting weights, but over the last few decades, between having children and pretty extreme knee and hip issues, I haven't been able to do a lot of work on my lower body. And thanks to modern medicine, I had a knee replacement, very successful, and so I've been strength training, particularly my glutes, quads, and hamstrings. And there's a plethora of really helpful weightlifting coaches, physical therapists, and personal trainers who have all kinds of Instagram and YouTube channels to give you amazing lower body workouts. And in my quest to grow a bunda at age 60, because our body doesn't lose the ability to get stronger, I have to be very careful comparing myself to the 20-somethings doing sumo squats on these videos, because it's likely my ass ain't never going to look like that. And we can use the achievements or gifts or talents of others as a source of inspiration or as a source of discouragement. It's very easy for us to compare and despair when we look at the often outstanding achievements of others. But as I enter a new decade, my 60th birthday is this week, this reminder to compare myself as I am today to who I was in the past, rather than comparing myself to others, has been an opportunity to take an introspective look at my own personal growth path. So I spent some time journaling on where I was at at these other marker points in my life. What was happening when I was 50, 40, 30, and God forbid 20, or even 10? If you could put the quality of my life experience on graph paper, it's a pretty steady upward line over time. Lots of little dips and detours, but I'm kind of on fire to be 60, 70, and maybe even 80. Because for me, 10, 20, and 30 really kind of (laughs) sucked. I'm happy to report there's been a lifetime progress of coming more into who I really am, spending time doing the things I most enjoy, and continuing to try to follow the little breadcrumbs and road signs that lead me on the path to purpose and fulfillment in both big and small ways. And fulfillment and self-approval is a path not a destination. It really is about finding joy in the journey, because no matter what's happening in my outside world, on some level, it will always just be Tuesday. And the idea that acquiring money, power, prestige, relationships can be fleeting. It is the experience of progress that really makes us happy. And progress can only be measured in myself. So although my butt may never look like the blue spandex girl on YouTube, I can compare back to what was happening with my body a year ago before I had my knee replacement surgery, when walking a couple blocks or standing for any length of time was pretty much undoable. Now I can walk two miles and I don't even need to wear compression pants because I don't have any leg swelling anymore, which I had for years. 
10 years ago, I had a terrible limp, a lot of hip pain. And the story I was telling myself is, oh, well, this is just what happens as you age, which is a terrible death message, particularly considering now 10 years later, I feel healthier, stronger, and more energetic than perhaps I have in my life. When I was 40, I was pregnant with my second child, a very different body experience. At 30, I was still really struggling with food and struggling in just about every area of my life, relationally, financially, professionally, familially. 28 to 32 was a particular dark night of the soul for me. I can look back to when I was 20 and what was happening with my body. I was still actively bulimic actively drinking and drugging, in tremendous confusion and self-hatred, really disconnected from myself. And at 10, I started to have panic attacks. I realized my parents would be of little use to me in helping me navigate my difficulties. And I started stealing candy bars, smoking cigarettes out in the woods, and looking at Playgirl magazines, hoping as best I could to medicate my existential angst. So if I compare myself to myself, I can feel really good about being where I am from where I have come. I have work that I love, kids that I love, friends that I love. I live in multiple places that I really enjoy. And I have over time been able to co-create a life of dynamism, creativity, and deep fulfillment. And it ain't over yet. Early in my 12-step recovery, I heard someone say, don't compare your insides with somebody else's outsides. So the young woman with the blue spandex bunda might have a really cute butt, but she also might be a superficial wingnut addicted to Adderall, having sex with her best friend's husband. Now, I'm not saying she is, and I don't want to use that as a jealous fantasy to make myself feel better at someone else's expense, but we really don't know what's happening under the surface in other people's lives. And under the surface is really where our experience is. And we are all having an experience here. And although how we look and present ourselves to the external world, or how other people appear to us, whether in person or on social media, appearances can absolutely be deceiving. I remember I had this client, beautiful Filipino woman, in her mid-40s, always impeccably dressed, beautiful body, stunning face, very talented artist, actually made jewelry on the side, and was a very successful middle manager in a big tech company in Silicon Valley. I actually met her because I bought something from her off of Craigslist. So I got to see her stunning condominium with original artwork, beautiful leather furniture, white rugs. And she found out I was a therapist and healer. We ended up having a long chat and she did a series of sessions with me. And as we got deeper into her reality, she was riddled with self-hatred, insecurity that drove her to almost pathological perfectionism, and she was desperately lonely. She'd had an extremely abusive and demanding mother and an absent father and only dated totally inappropriate or unavailable men. And when she wasn't out in the world looking perfect, she was often literally in bed with the covers pulled over her head and the shades pulled down. And in one of our last sessions together, she confessed to me that earlier that week she had driven out to a beautiful hotel on the California coast, bought herself a glass of wine, and took a series of pictures of herself out on the veranda overlooking this stunning view so she could post them on social media. I don't even know if she drank the glass of wine, but she got back in her car and went home and posted her perfectly made up, beautifully dressed, sexy little self on Instagram or Facebook, wherever she was posting, and it was complete and utter bullshit. Tragedy. I was on a plane recently behind this beautiful young 20-something who spent over an hour taking selfies of herself and airbrushing them. I'm going to guess for her, taking selfies has ranked into becoming a hobby, if not a vocation. And again, I thought, she might be gorgeous, but would I actually like her as a person? Now, starting at birth, pretty much, humans attune to the people and circumstances around them. It's how we learn language, behavior, and what gets us attention or approval or love, and what gets us ignored, disapproved of, or rejected. 
One of the extreme difficulties about being a child is that we have very little choice about our circumstances or who we're trying to attune ourselves to. But luckily, as we age, we do have the power of choice of who we surround ourselves with and who we're trying to copy or emulate. And am I spending time with people or information that inspire me? Or am I immersed in circumstances that make me feel bad? And so when my son was in third grade, the first week of summer, he looked at me and he said, Mom, do you think I could go to a school where I might be able to have friends? Oh, knife in my heart. Yes, dear, we will look into that. Both my kids were in the same school, very different children, very different experience. My daughter loved it there. My son, it was a fail on many levels. So we found this very special little quirky school. And I'm very grateful that I had in-laws who were educators themselves who were willing to help and support us in helping and supporting our son to go to this very outside-the-box place. And compared to the very athletic Irish Catholic culture that was the foundation of the school that he came from, where he really didn't fit in. He went from being an oddball, and in his new school, he was one of the highest functioning and most successful students there. And so when we compare ourselves to others, it really depends on who we're comparing to, because human life is always an interactive venture. We are always comparing internally and externally. And if we find those comparisons painful or discouraging or anxiety-producing, then that's important information that we're either being called to grow or something needs to change, either in our circumstance or in our perspective. And sometimes we need to change all of it because we all have this internal compass of joy and suffering. Pain lets us know when things are out of alignment or need attention. And joy lets us know we are on the right path, aligning with our own highest good. So I encourage you to compare yourself with yourself. And when you compare yourself to others, as we always do, is it a source of inspiration or a source of discouragement? Is it helpful or is it painful? And when we look deeply and pay attention, we have tremendous power to realign and co-create a life experience that is rich and fulfilling and nourishing usually beyond what we can imagine. And growing to be able to imagine that and open to the unlimited resources of the loving and creative field that we are all connected with, that's a place we can all grow. Thank you so much for listening. If you want help on your personal growth path, shoot me an email, info at renamekenna.com. Let's set up a discovery call. See if a block of spiritual psychology work might benefit you in your life. For years, I've been wanting to work in groups and get to meet and interact more individually with all of you. And there's plans in the way to create a community membership that includes some monthly groups, more personal interactions, and lots of content that you won't be able to get elsewhere. I'm going to keep you posted on that. We're reorganizing my mentorship program into modules so that it's much more accessible to everyone. And I'm working very hard to create formats and tools to bring this amazing spiritual psychology work that has so transformed and benefited my own life out to you guys. I always have free workshops coming out on Insight Timer. You can check out my Insight Timer profile in the show notes. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon and through this podcast. Blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.